Come on in. Good evening, everybody. Come on in. <coughs> good evening, Sister Bird. Smile. Let me know you can hear me. That my sound is good. Sound check. Sister Lundy, good evening. <laughs> See, there you go, CC starting. Why you got to start? Why you got to start? <laughs> Sister Major, good evening. Sister Stacy, good evening. Sister Youngs, good evening. Sister Skindred. Sister Pelt, good evening. Good evening, Sister Yvonne, Sister Peyton, good evening. Sister Webb, good evening. <clears throat> Sister Gates, good evening. Sister Sims, good evening. I'm going to give a few more minutes, let people come on in. Clancy, good, e good evening. Brother Phillips, good evening. Thank you, Brother Phillips. See, let me put this on the screen. Put that on the screen. I love this shirt. G-Men. <laughs> that sees God always answers when the hate come in the room. He'll send you some people around you to support you. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh God. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. We're going to get started. We got a lot to get to tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for just breathing on us and keeping us, God, for being a hedge of protection all around us all week long, God, since we've last been together. We pray, God, that your anointing will fall tonight that you open our hearts and minds and make us receptive to your word. We love you and we thank you. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray that every believer say, amen, amen, amen. Good evening, everybody. See, there go First Lady Hayden. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to Bible study. Um, we have been in a series um, that we've entitled Answering the Questions of Jesus. Um, and, um, the first question that we interrogated that we looked at was when Jesus asked the question, who do you say that I am? Last week, we looked at a second question, which was, what do you want me to do for you? That was the question that Jesus asked. What do you want me to do for you? Well, tonight I'm going to add, I'm going to, we're going to look at a third question that Jesus raised. And remember, I really need you to think about if Jesus was personally asking you this question, because as the disciple, he is through the spirit of the living God. He's raising this question for all of us. And so here's the question that we're going to raise. And it's, it's going to get a little heavy. I'm going to tell you all now. Um, so let me just get that out the way. Um, if you if you got on tonight looking for once again, you know, increase in prosperity, teaching this ain't it. <laughs> but but anyway. The question that Jesus is raising tonight that we're going to look at is, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? Let's go to Luke 6. Let's look at the question together. We're going to start tonight in Luke, it's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 46. Luke 6, verse 46 is where we're going to start tonight. Remember, this Bible's out and that you study along with us. This is Bible study. Get your Bible out. Get your app out. Read along with us. Underline. Uh, again, we ask you not to study with King James. We want you to truly understand the word. 
to get you an NIV, an RSV, New Living. Um, just don't try to do, even if you do New King James, it's better than King James. All right. So Luke 6, 46, y'all there? I hope so. Listen to the question. You can read it for yourself. Why do you call me? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Why, why do you say that I'm a savior, that I'm the Messiah, that I'm the son of God? Why do you give me this authority, this title, this designation, but then turn around and not do what I say? If you believe that I am Lord, then the question is, why don't you do what the Lord says? Listen to what he continues to say. Verse 47, as for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug deep down and laid the foundation on a rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice, it's like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. I want you to turn to James with me. And I want you to read it. I want, to, I want you to hear how James articulates this thought. James chapter one, verse 22 is where we're going. James chapter one, verse 22. Go there with me with this same thought in mind. And we're gonna look at it a little deeper. James one, verse 22. The, the underlying theme of tonight is obedience. If you believe that Jesus is Lord, why are we not obedient? Listen to how James says it. It's James verse 22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So what Jesus is saying and what James is adding to is that there's blessings when we're obedient. If we believe that Jesus is Lord, then we ought to be willing to do it his way. If we believe that Jesus is truly the son of God, Lord, then we should be willing to do what the Lord says. So let me do some teaching real quick and help you. First of all, I want to point out something. That in that there's numerous uses of the word Lord in the New Testament. But the word Lord in the New Testament has actually two meanings. One is just a term of respect, like sir. The other one is where the person saying it is recognizing the divinity or the, um, the, the authority, if you will, of Jesus. They're basically saying, I believe that you are the son of God when, when you hear the word Lord. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you something real quick. You don't necessarily have to turn to this, but I do want to show you this so I can show you the distinction. Look at Matthew 25 and 11. Look at Matthew 25, 11. Oops. I'll show you the difference. You'll see one uses of the word Lord. Matthew 25 and 11. If you look at that, here's what you're going to see. It's Jesus telling the parable. 
Um, yeah, he's telling the parable. Actually, you can go back to verse 10. He's telling the parable of the 10 virgins. You've probably heard the parable before, but that's not the point. I want you to kind of get the context here. Look at verse 10. But while they were on their way to buy oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in, went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. Now they're talking about the bridegroom. But the word Lord, Lord here, while it's the same word in the Greek, the connotation here is sir. It's a term of respect. Lord, open the door for us. Sir, open the door for us. It's not necessarily using it in the context of Jesus being the son of God. However, if you look at it in other contexts, you'll see that that's exactly what it means. And let me show you the difference. Go to John 20. John chapter 20. We're going to start reading in verse 26. John chapter 20. Verse 26. I'm trying to lay this foundation so you can see it properly. That this word Lord <laughs> is powerful. But in the New Testament, it has two meanings. Sometimes it means sir, term, a term of respect. Sometimes it means Lord, meaning son of God, the one in authority, all that, divinity, all that. So watch. John 20, verse 26, a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Y'all know the story. Look what Thomas says. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. He is acknowledging the divinity of Jesus. And he's making it personal. My Lord, my God. He is recognizing the divinity of Jesus. So if you think about this now, what Jesus is, now, and by the way, by the way, I need to add this real quick. When we make our confession of faith, which is in Romans 10, I say it mostly every Sunday, when we're inviting people online to come to Jesus, right? What do I say? What is what is the confession? I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart, what? That Jesus Christ is Lord. That is the essence of our confession of faith. When you confess Christ, that's what you said. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart. Come on, Baptist that Jesus Christ is Lord. We are recognizing the divinity, the authorship, the authority rather that Jesus is the son of God, the Messiah. So once again, since you confess that, if you believe that, the question that you gotta ask, that Jesus is asking rather is, Okay, if you believe I'm the son of God, if you believe I'm Lord, why don't you do what I say? Why don't you do it my way? And that's a profound question because it has so many implications to it, right? It's saying, I recognize, Lord, that you can see what I can't see. I recognize, Lord, that you hold the future in your hands. I recognize, Lord, that you have more power than I have. I recognize, Lord, that you have salvation that you've given to me. I recognize all these things, and yet I'm going to do it my way. I told you it was going to get deep tonight. <laughs> Who got? Let, let, let me show you some whys. Let me show you. Um, why this might be. Turn to Titus, a book we don't really go to a lot. Turn to the book of Titus for a minute. This is why we come to Bible study, because we can surf around in 
in some books that we may not necessarily look at all the time. Titus 1, start reading in verse 15. We're going to start looking at two scriptures that might point to why we're not obedient. Why, 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 even though we say Jesus is Lord, we might not be totally obedient for some of these reasons. Listen to what the writer says in the book of Titus, verse 15, to the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are corrupted, and do not believe nothing in is pure. In fact, both their minds and their consciousness, consciousnesses are corrupted. They claim to know God, but by their actions, they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for anything good. That's kind of hardcore, right? <laughs> But what he's pointing out here is the why. Sometimes we become corrupted. Now, if you think about this in the context of a computer, when you get a virus, for example, they'll say your, your computer has a virus, is corrupted. Your data is corrupted. You got to get it cleaned. And so they'll clean the computer and get rid of the corruption. If you can, if, if that analogy works for you, then you can understand how we become corrupted during life, that we are exposed to things that are not of God. And sometimes those things end up corrupting us. Instead of, for example, loving people, we see images and things that tell us that we don't have to love those people who we don't like and who we disagree with. The world will tell us we can cut them off. The world will tell us that we can Talk about them like a dog. The world will tell us, you know, that we can flex on them and do these things because that's what we see on TV and that's what we see people do. It's like <laughs> what you see on social media late, lately with these women that they've used the term Karen, right? They can just treat people any old kind of way, just go off because they feel they have the privilege and the right to do it. I was watching social media the other day and uh, um, this clip on social media, they rather... And I don't know if you guys seen this about a man in Texas. There's an immigrant on the side of the road selling vegetables. The man pulls up and just commits to just turning over the man's vegetable stand, throwing his, his vegetables on in the ground just because he didn't want this man selling stuff in his neighborhood. Now, he eventually got arrested. But somewhere along the line, that man got corrupted. Somewhere along the line, he thought to himself, that there was nothing wrong with what he did. That he was okay with treating this immigrant man like that, even though Jesus says that we're supposed to welcome the strangers. Come on, y'all. I'm biblical. Jesus says in Matthew's gospel, Matthew 25, welcome the stranger. And yet this man, who I bet you would call himself a Christian, thought it was okay to treat that man that way. He didn't even know that man. He just got out of his truck and just assaulted him. Corruption. So, so there is definitely times where we become corrupted by the world. We take on attitudes and we take on behaviors of the world that move us away from doing what the Lord tells us to do. Let me show you one more other example. Turn with me to, um, where am I at? Um, Second Timothy. I'm sorry, y'all, for that. We're going to Second Timothy 3 and 1. Second Timothy 3 and 1. We're still talking about the why. Why are we not obedient? Why, why do we sometimes fail to do what Jesus says? I'm trying to show you in the word, maybe some answers to that question. 
2 Timothy 3 and 1. You ready? Again, this is hard. I'm not pointing no fingers at somebody. I'm just saying, here's what the word says. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. Mm. Lovers of money. Mm. Boastful. Proud. Abusive. Disobedient to their parents. Ungrateful. Unholy. Without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, <laughs> I'm just reading the scripture, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than <laughs> lovers of God. Ooh. Now, again, if you are paying attention, what you're seeing is two things happening at the same time. One, there's this move away from God. I was just um, I'm preparing for a speaking engagement that I have to do for work, and it, it, it's talking about how um, the those who quap who check the box of when they ask about religion they check the box check the box as none the nuns are rising faster than those who are willing to commit to religion so the nuns are starting to take over people are moving away from religion they're moving away from spirituality at the same time they're taking on attitudes and behaviors that i just read Money has become God, right? Um, being seen, right? Having these large social media followings, being seen and being followed and, and having um, followers is becoming what people worship. They want to be seen. They want to be followed because in following them, they now become wanted right and so you're seeing this thing in, in especially with social media it's just taking off right and so what you're if you're paying attention you're seeing a lot of these behaviors played out and the point here being is if you're a lover of money if you're a lover of, if you love money if you love yourself right if you um are conceited and and don't like to give forgiveness if you're boastful and proud it's hard to be those things and then be obedient to jesus are y'all with me on this tonight it is hard to be to demonstrate the characteristics that's lifted up in second timothy three and one and then be obedient because he says it the way he ends it he says if you're a lover of self, of pleasure rather, then how can you be a lover of God? I feel like I'm by myself. I'm trying to help y'all. That we have to check ourselves. That somewhere along the way, we all get corrupted. And it's our corruption that keeps us from not being obedient. Let me try one other way. Michelle Obama famously said, when they go low, we go high, right? That's a Christian ethic almost. But the truth is some of us do, we enjoy going low, right? We, we know how to cuss people out well. We know how to let give people a piece of our mind. We don't mind going low. And it's because we become corrupted. We be, that becomes normal and okay with us. It is well with our soul, right? To do, to sometimes be disobedient. We're disobedient and it doesn't even bother us anymore. The conviction, we get convicted and we might get convicted for a minute like, ooh, but then we go right back to being disobedient. And so Jesus is asking the question, why do you call me Lord then? 
why, why do you recognize me as the son of God, but then say, I'm not going to do anything that you say. I'm going to do it my way and not yours. So I want to show you this and wrap this up tonight, because, again, this is kind of self-explanatory. I, I want to show you two examples of where of how. It goes back to what um, was original, what we originally read, and that is that when we do it God's way, we're always blessed. That when we're willing to be obedient and do it the Lord's way, it always works out for our good in the end. Always. It may not happen immediately. It may not come on the timetable you want, but it always works out for our good. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be hard days. There's not going to be struggle. There's not going to be stress and strain. Doesn't mean that at all. It just means that it's going to work out for our good in the end because we did it God's way. And the Lord will always honor that when we say, Lord, I'm just going to try to do it your way. I, I know what I want to do, but I know what your word says, and I'm going to try to do it your way. So let me show you. And by the way, while I'm saying this, turn to Acts 5. One of the ways, and I always do this because it's just one of the easiest examples. <laughs> It always makes people uncomfortable because they go, that ain't right, Pastor. You know, you don't have to use that example. But let me let me get this in first. Acts 5, and we're going to start reading at verse 17. One of the easiest examples is, is like tithing and giving and praising and worshiping, right? The Lord says, I expect you to do these things. We go, no, nah, I ain't doing it. And the question is, well, then why do you call me Lord? See, I knew it was going to get quiet when I did that. And nobody hit a like or love because we don't like that. But this is what I'm talking about. We don't like that part, right? When you talk about tithing and giving and praising and worshiping, we don't like, we hear what the word says. We ain't, we ain't doing that. So Jesus would say, then why do you call me Lord? <laughs> See? See how it got quiet right there? I'm just giving you a real life example. But let me keep going because, yeah, I mean, it's radio silence. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Y'all ready to move on? I'm just trying to help you tonight. I'm trying to make it real for you. You ready? Okay. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to put that on the screen real quick. She said. She said, we didn't put that on the screen. She said, you, no, not that one. That one. Say out your amen. I hear you. <laughs> I told you it wasn't going to be easy tonight. I warned y'all. But anyway, let's keep going. I'm going to show you this one. Get out your way. Acts 5, verse 17. You ready? We're showing you the other side now. What does it look like when we obey? How does it always work out for our good? Does it always work out for our good? I'm going to show you. You ready? Watch. Then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in, in the public jail. <laughs> but now let me pause right here. Let me set this up properly. The disciples were doing what the Lord told them. They are preaching, they're teaching, they're witnessing about Jesus. They're doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. They are being, being obedient because they believe that Jesus was Lord. Now that's the setup. The Bible says that the, that the Sadducees got jealous because of what they were doing and put them in jail. Now y'all back. We all on the same page, all right? So watch. Verse 19. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought him out. I love it. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, said the angel. And look, look at what the instruction is. And tell the people all about this new life. Don't miss what just happened. They're doing what the Lord says. They are being obedient. Some haters come along and throw them in prison. The angel of the Lord shows up and opens the prison door. But then he re 
iterates what they're supposed to do. He says, go and tell the people all about this new life. Now, I'm going to stop right here because here's what often happens. <laughs> the Lord blesses us, shows us that he's with us. And at that moment of choice, we choose not to do what the Lord says. Because they could have said, man, I, they didn't put me in jail once. I'm not going back to jail. You know how it sounds. I ain't, I'm, I'm not, I ain't signed up for all this, all this drama and all this jealousy and all this hate. They could have easily said, no, we ain't teaching nothing because the burden is too great. The sacrifice is too much. It's too inconvenient. The math don't add up. It's not working for me. And just said no. But at that moment, they made the choice to continue to be obedient because here it comes. They believe that Jesus is Lord. So watch what happens. Verse 21. At daybreak, they entered the temple court as they had been told and began to teach the people. <laughs> Who got when the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together to say the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them. So they went back and reported, We found the jail securely locked and the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Verse 24. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple of the guard and the chief priests were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. Now, you would think right here, some of them would have got on board because obviously they witnessed a miracle, but not necessarily. Verse 25, then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. Next verse, verse 27. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. Verse 28. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Listen to what Peter says next. Peter and the other, and the other apostles replied, here it comes. We must obey God rather than human beings. That's the part I wanted to get to right there. Underline that. We must obey God rather than human beings. Oh, God, there it is. That ought to be our ethic right there. We must obey God. We must do our best to do it his way. If he said it, we're going to try our best to do it. Watch. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, rather, whom God has given to those who obey him. <laughs> Basically, what he's saying is Jesus is Lord. Remember what Lord means. It means he's the son of God. They just said he's been exalted. They are recognizing he's an authority. They recognize that he's over all. That's what they're saying. In other words, if I was to cut it, I would say they would simply say he's Lord. And because he's Lord, watch, rather, he's Lord, and we are witnesses to the fact that he's Lord. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is also a witness that he is Lord. And God gives to all of those who, who obey him the power of the Holy Spirit. So we have 
the counselor in our ear, trying to lead us and to guide us into being obedient. That's why the Lord gave us the spirit. Because in our nature, sometimes we don't want to be. There are things right now I'm struggling with in my personal life. I don't know if I should have said it that way because some of y'all will take that all wrong. Let me let me, let me me not say that because y'all will take it wrong. There's just things that I want to do and things that I should do that I'm struggling with because of my flesh and I don't want to do them, right? And so I'm like, Lord, work on me and get me where I need to be because I know what your word says. So even your pastor has struggles. We all struggle with stuff. And don't take that the wrong way and make it all deep. I'm just trying to share with y'all. Be careful what I say. But all of us are there. And I'm trying to help you see that. All of us have areas in our lives that we struggle with. And we know what the Lord says because we've been around church long enough, right? We, We know, right, what the Lord is saying. But in our humanity, we don't want to do it. Paul said it this way. Uh, what I should do, I do not do. Right. And I think that's what I'm trying to say. All of us. Somebody laughing. All of us have those things that we know we should do. We just ain't doing them. Because our flesh is in the way. Our, our corruption is in the way. Our, our feelings, our emotions are all in the way. And they keep our desires are in the way. Dare I just say our sins are in the way. And so we just don't do them. But what Paul is trying to teach us tonight and the apostles are trying to teach us tonight, there has to come a point where we say, we're going to obey God. And what I'm trying to show you is when you do that, it always works out for our good. And that's what you can see in the text. Yes, their obedience initially put them in prison. But the Lord worked that thing out. Brought them out of prison. They weren't there long because the Lord stepped in and worked it out for their good. But watch, the minute the Lord did it, the Lord then connected the dot and said, now keep on being obedient. Keep on doing it my way. I got you. And what did they do? They went right out there and started teaching and doing exactly what the Lord told them to do. Are y'all getting this? I'm trying to make it easy. All right, I'm going to show you one more thing, and I'm going to wrap it up. Y'all ready? Here we're going to close it. Old Testament, go to Deuteronomy. I want you to hear the Lord's, God's promise. Verse, I mean, chapter 28, verse 1. Deuteronomy. 28 and 1. Last scripture for tonight. We're going to be done. (laughs) Y'all ready? All right. Listen to God's promise. If you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow all his commands, All the commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if, that's the condition, you obey the Lord your God. Here it comes, it's familiar, y'all ready? You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock Cast of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading bread will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. That's it. If you remember what I read to you in James, with James ended by saying, if you do it the Lord's way, you'll be blessed. If you remember what Jesus says when we started this in Luke 6, do it my way. It's like a house built on a firm foundation that when the storms blow, you're going to be all right. 
they're all pointing to the same thing that there's that that there are blessings when we're willing to be obedient and here's the motivation i'm done here's the motivation because he's lord that's it i'm going to do it because i believe that you are lord i believe that you're the son of god i believe that you have all power i believe that you can bless me I believe that you love me. That's why I'm going to do it. And so as we struggle with those areas of our lives, and as we recognize those areas in our lives that we're not necessarily being obedient, that we're not doing it God's way, Maybe what can help us is to come back to the basic premise. I'm going to do it because Jesus asked me to. That's why. I'm going to do it because the Lord asked me to do it. I have, my, I don't know about you guys, but you know, for me, my mother's the salt of the earth. My wife will tell you. <laughs> I, I, I have committed to being the best son to my mother I can that I can be. My mother, as many of you know, I lost my brother and I'm the last of my mother's children. And so I told her, you know, mom, you know, from here on out, if you if, if you want me to do it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be the best son you have. So when she asked me to do something for her, it's not even a question. I do it because she asked me to. And I think that kind of ethic ought to be the same one we have with the Lord. I do it because the Lord asked me to. And just as I love my mom, I love the Lord. So I am trying. Oh God, and the key word here is trying. I am trying to do the best that I can by the Lord that I love. And that's, I think, what the Lord is looking for all of us. If you love him, do the best that you can by him. Do, do, do what he says. And here's the shout, and I'm done. When we are obedient, it'll always work out for our good, and there will always be a blessing waiting for us because God will honor the fact that we decided and risked, dare I say, risk doing it his way. Amen. All right, I'm done. Who oh God, I wanted to make that as painless as possible because I know obedience is a hard one for many of us. It's a struggle, right? So I hope that helped and wasn't too heavy for some of you. Amen. <laughs> All right. Praise reports and prayer request. Um, this week, we are, oops, we are praying. The ministries that I want you to lift up in your prayers this week are our ministers. Uh, they are preparing to um, help with our revival that's coming up. And so we wanna be praying for our ministers even now that the Lord will speak to their hearts as they are in preparation to minister to God's people. We also want to lift up our Sunday school teachers, uh, and we also want you to lift up our missions ministry. Um, they are really working hard in preparation to serve God's people um, during this upcoming Thanksgiving season. Plus, we are looking at some new international ministries and different things we want to start doing. So I just ask you to lift up the missions ministry in your prayer this week. So it's ministers, Sunday school teachers, as well as our missions ministry. It's what we're asking you to pray for this week in your prayers. As it relates to our prayer list, we are, of course, lifting up uh, Wallace and Miriam Hardy, uh, Mother Maddie Dixon, Mother Maddie Pittman, Sister Wanda Lemon, um, Birdie, Reed, Birdie Reed, Loretta Smith, Doris Hurt, Madeline Hampton, Ronnie Berman, Austin Gass, Shirley Saunders, um, Louise Bowie, William McLeod, Chester McGoggin, Chester, not McGoggins, Lord Hammers, Chester Goggins, 
uh, Margaret Daniels, Dolores Scott, Angela Barnett, Bobby Fowler, Ramsey White, uh, Reverend Milton Reeves, Shayla Moses, uh, Brother, uh, Brother Ramsey Wright was in the hospital, but he's home now to the glory of God. Praise God for that. Uh, Shayla Moses, Derek Johnson, uh, Rosa Harrison, Kevin Fowler, Sparkle Fowler, Angel, Angela Lewis, Marcus Henderson, who, who again buried his brother, I believe on Tuesday, yesterday. So we're going to keep lifting up Brother Henderson and his family. Uh, Ernestine Pittman and James Mobley. Um, let me see what's on here. Here we go. Um, Eugene Cotman is in the hospital in Baltimore. We will definitely add him Mona, to the prayer list. Keep us updated, please. Hey, Sister Lemon, I didn't know you were on tonight. We will keep you on the prayer list. Amen. We're looking for you to be back in the house. But praise God for the update. Thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight and, and giving us a quick praise report. Uh, we will definitely keep you on the prayer list. All right. Any other praise reports or prayer requests that we need to add to our list? We did get Brother Eugene Cotman. We got him on the list. Any others before we close in prayer? Huh. Praying for our future leadership. Yes, Lord. Because if you've been paying attention to what's going on in our country right now, especially with this foolish shutdown that could be coming our way, we definitely want to continue to pray for the leadership of this country. Pray for the pray for the prayer ministry as they continue to pray on all of our behalves. Yep. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Brother Phillips, for sharing that, that text with us. No good thing will be held from them that walk upright. Upright. Uprighty. Uprighty? <laughs> Is that King James? Uprighty. Okay. <laughs> Was that supposed to be upright? We know what you mean, though, brother. Thank you for sharing that. Amen. All right. I don't see any other praise reports or prayer requests tonight. What's up, Brother Buford? Good to see you on tonight. Hope you're doing well my brother. All right, let's close out in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this night. We thank you for your word. And we pray now, God, that in those areas of our lives where we know we're not being obedient, breathe on us, God, work on our hearts and move us towards obedience. Help us to honor that you are Lord and be willing to just do it your way. We lift up all of the names that we've called out tonight and the ministries that we've called out tonight. We pray, God, that you would even meet those unspoken prayer requests. You know what we stand in need of. And we thank you, God, for the praise reports that we received on tonight for those who are getting better. We thank you, God, for your peace for those who are bereaved right now. Continue to comfort them. And Lord, we just pray that you continue to meet all of us at our needs. Help us to know that you are with us and that you are God. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, we will uh, be concluding this study next week. Uh, this is going to wrap it up because in the month of October, we'll be in our Fall Harvest Revival every Wednesday night. We have some great preachers coming. We have a great revival list. I mean, a great list of revivalists coming. So I'm excited about what God is going to be doing for us in the month of October. So for all of you on tonight, make sure that you are coming out to worship with us on next month. Uh, we will, It will be streamed. So for those of you who can't get out, we will definitely be streaming it. So we pray that you join us for revival and that the Lord will move on our hearts as we move into this season called fall. God bless you. God keep, God keep all of you. And we will see you all next week. Have a good evening.